What's up, hobby friends, and welcome to the video tutorial on how to paint the Marvel Crisis Protocol Rivals Sabretooth figure. This is the second part of the box set. You can check out my video last week on how to paint Logan and his motorcycle. Up on screen, I have the colors I used to paint Sabretooth. So if you want to give the video a pause, you can note those down before we dive right on in. So the preparation for Sabretooth, I've chosen to sub-assemble the model and keeping the figure and the base separate so that I can get underneath, I can do any sort of dry brushing or painting on the log. Keep them separate just to make it easier to get the brush into all the nooks and crannies underneath as well as just on top of the logs. We'll keep them separate, paint everything, and then once we're done, assemble it all together at the very end. So what I'm doing is I'll use some Vallejo Surface Primer Black with the airbrush. I'll give this model a prime and then we'll dive right on into the painting. In terms of color schemes, we're not actually going to follow the box art. My client has requested that I do black pants, black jacket, and then obviously his standard skin tone, blonde hair. I'm probably going to give the shirt a an ochre tan color, just as a nod to his more traditional suit color. I'll probably paint the pants in sort of like a black cargo material and then I'll go for I'm not sure if I want to do black leather or something with a little bit more of a a rougher like a patchier fur texture to the jacket but I'll try and get some material separation there I'll probably use two different color recipes as well probably a neutral or warm black for the pants and then a cool black for the jacket paint the copper on the base we're gonna start with a base coat of African shadow and this is to help mirror the Logan figure and tie the two together. I'm going to make sure you apply a base coat very carefully over to the edges and not get anything on the blue. I'll highlight with AK's Saddle Brown, focusing on the front part of the curve and creating a blend towards the back. Our next highlight will be with AK's Deep Brown. Again, continuing to concentrate on the front where we want our brightest highlights to be and then fading it towards the back of the figure. And then from there, I'm gonna start mixing progressive amounts of pastel yellow. And once I get to about 50-50, I'm going to apply an edge highlight over all of the edges and corners of the copper. And then from there, we'll continue working up to pure pastel yellow. First with our brightest highlight spots, and then some final sharp highlights on the brightest edges and corners of the copper. You'll also want to consider the reflections from adjacent copper elements, because that may also increase the brightness of certain highlights. And then finally, I'm going to use some Games Workshop Vanilla Hat Oxide, and I'm going to apply some verdigris and some some rust and weathering. This color works really great on the mid and dark tones, so that's really where you should be focusing it and avoiding the highlighted areas. The base coat of the tree, I'm gonna use a 50-50 mix of tenbus gray and black red. I'll apply a nice even base coat, being careful not to overpaint onto any of the copper or the blue elements. From there, I'll apply my first highlight of black red, and I'll create my highlights in the direction of the wood bark. For this stage, I'm ignoring the individual um, textured elements of the bark and just focusing on the form. With this World War I French brown, again, following the direction of the sculpt of the bark is when I'll start to pick out the individual details of the texture. Going a little heavier on the top and then a little finer with the highlights near the bottom of the underside of the tree bark. I'm also using a bit of a dotting dragging motion to help create a bit of unevenness in my highlights. On the side, in the heartwood of the bark, I want to apply a nice strong base coat of this French brown. From there, I'll use black red diluted and apply a few glazes to the mid and shadow tones of the bark, create a bit more of a, a blend or a transition and to soften some of those uh, textured highlights. Using number six earth yellow, 
I'm gonna to start to highlight the heartwood or the inside of the tree bark. And this is where we're gonna to start to create those, those rings that you typically see when you've got a fresh cut log. My next highlight will be with pure light earth, doing the exact same thing, um, focusing on creating and highlighting those rings. And again, just using that um, stippling dragging motion to get an unevenness in the texture. To paint the moss, I'll be using deep green and light green. Starting with deep green, I'm gonna stipple and dot where I wanna have clusters or clumps of the moss. Think about where moisture would continually collect because that's usually where the moss is going to grow. You also wanna bring this uh, moss texture in between the crevices of some of the bark texture. And from there, I'll apply some stippling of light green in the center of the deep green. Add a bit of that um, layered texture feel, create a bit of a highlight and brighten up those green areas. I'm gonna use some reddish black to apply a base coat onto the skin. You'll wanna apply a few thin coats to get a nice even base coat. From there, my next highlight is with base flush. I want to get the majority of the highlights on the skin, keeping the um, black red in the deepest recesses. From base flush, I'm going to start mixing into beige red. On the more pronounced skin and folds of the face, I can use fewer transition steps. And then when you get to the neck and the chest, you'll want to mix a few more to get a bit of a smoother blend. With pure beige red, I'm gonna focus some bright highlights on the front of the skin. So we're looking at the, the tips of the nose, eyebrows, cheekbones, jowls, upper and lower lip, as well as the chin. I'm gonna further highlight the skin by mixing in a bit of pale yellow into the beige red. And I'm gonna really concentrate this on the more pronounced elements of the face. You see by really concentrating some bright highlights, especially on the cheekbones, you give the, um, the cheeks and the jowls a very um, inset gaunt look. And then with some diluted scarlet red, I'm gonna apply a few glazes into the mid and shadow tones of the skin. I'm concentrating on the neck, the sides of the head, underneath the chin, as well as the palms and undersides of the fingers. To paint the eyes and the teeth, I'm gonna be using tenuous gray to first base coat and fill in the sockets. I'm gonna be using a very fine detail brush for this to avoid overpainting onto any of the skin. From there, I'm gonna use white sands and I'm gonna to start to paint the teeth. So I had initially painted each of the teeth individually, but it ended up looking a little bit too cartoony. And so I went back in, particularly on the fronts, and just applied a few thin glazes to knock back some of the, the black lining and make it feel more natural and less cartoony. For the eyes, I'm gonna do a white dot to fill in the eyeball, leaving a bit of the tenebrous gray to black line before going back in with some tenebrous gray to dot the pupil. The base coat the shirt, I'm using AK's medium C gray. You'll want to do a couple of thin passes to avoid any chalkiness in the color, and you'll want to make sure you get a nice even base coat with the gray. My next highlight will be with warm gray. And if you watched the Logan video, it's pretty much the exact same technique and the exact same color recipe. I tried to get some color palette parity between the two to tie the two figures together because I think they do belong as part of a set. From warm gray, we're continuing to highlight up with pale sand. The goal is to get the pure pale sand, so we'll mix progressive amounts of colors depending on how smooth or how sharp we want the highlights. You can see as well that as I'm highlighting up, I'm connecting the different parts of the, um, the muscles on the chest, particularly the abdomen, by highlighting the recesses with that pale sand. 
And then my final highlight is with pure white. I'm not gonna go over with this. I'm mainly focusing on the brightest raised parts of the chest, um, the top folds of the ab, as well as the collar where it meets the, uh, the neck and the exposed skin. Paint the hair, I'm gonna start with a base coat of dark shadow flesh. Make sure that you get the eyebrows as well as the sideburns and be careful not to overpaint on any of the skin. You wanna make sure that you leave none of the black primer showing. From there, my next highlight is medium rust. My first few highlight passes will largely ignore too many of the individual strands, although I do wanna make sure I pick out some of the larger ones. I'm mainly focusing on the form and the volume at this early stage. And then from there, my next highlight is orange brown, and here's where I start to really focus on individual strands. When you're painting hair or fur or detail like this, focus on form first and then detail. Next, I'll do a 50 50 mix of orange brown and um, pale yellow. And you can see that I'm really starting to focus on those really bright, sharp highlights for the individual strands. Before finishing off with a pure highlight of pale yellow. And with this, I'm mainly focusing on the front forward elements. I want to maintain that um, yellowy orange ochre tone for the mid and shadow tones. To paint the pants, I'm going to base coat with a mix of Gunship green and black in a 50-50 mix. And then from there, I'll just add a bit more of that gunship green to create a soft highlight. The goal is to get sort of a black green color tone. So I don't want to go too overboard with this highlight. I'm focusing on just the front parts of the pants. You can see I'm picking out the defined folds, especially on the bottoms. And I'm ignoring the, the seams on the sides of the pants for now, because I intend to go back in and black line them afterwards. And then with the airbrush, I'm gonna go in with a 50-50 mix of the green and the black and just apply a glaze to help smooth those mid-tone and shadow tones and bring back some of that blackness in the shadow. You can do this by hand. I'm lazy and I prefer using the airbrush. To paint the boots and the jacket, I'm going to start with a 50-50 mix of anthracite gray and black, and we'll apply our first base coat. On the jacket, I want a worn, sort of cracked leather texture to it. So as I highlight, you're going to start to see that texture show through. Um, as I'm working my way up to pure anthracite gray as well, I'm using sort of this scratchy crosshatch pattern to get that texture on the jacket. When I use this same recipe on the boots, my blends will be a little bit smoother to get a, a more polished black leather feel to it. In this way, I can use the same recipe on two different parts of the model and have, through the material finish, a bit of a separation in those two objects. And then finally, I'll use a 50-50 mix of tenebrous gray and black. And I'll work to smooth out the mid-tones and shadow tones, bring back that black richness in the shadows, and just add a bit more nuance and blending. You can see on the jacket how rough it was in the sketching and painting phase, both because I was focusing mainly on the texture and also because I didn't really try to blend them at all, knowing that I would go back in with the glaze to do the smoothing. And then finally, with pure black, I'll go back in and I will a black line all of the seams and recesses on the boots and the pants as well as the jacket. Using black red, I'm going to apply a base coat over all of the straps. We're looking at the legs as well as the belt. From there, I'll use World War I French Brown. And I'm just going to apply my next highlight straight. You can see that I'm applying my highlights in a horizontal pattern. Basically, I imagine the leather straps cracking over use, and that's where I'm capturing that texture from. 
And then finally, I'll use number six earth yellow and just apply a edge highlight over the leather straps, as well as the occasional scratch over um, just random surfaces to apply a bit more uh, texture and information. With IDF Modern Gray, I'm going to apply a base coat to the claws around his neck, as well as on his fingertips. I'll use 728 Uncle Galb Osgabe 1944 to apply my next highlight. You can see here that I'm focusing on the top half of the claws. I'll also be tackling the belt buckle with the same recipe. My final highlight will be with warm gray and I'm gonna focus this on the top brightest parts of the talons. This is fairly similar to the shadow tone of the shirt. So you wanna make sure that you're um, leaving that contrast and not having too much of the shadow tone of the shirt beside a bright highlight of the cloth. Paint the fur on the jacket. I'm going to start with a base coat of basalt gray. Just being careful not to overpaint onto the jacket, the shirt, or the skin. My first highlight will be with dark sea blue, or dark sea gray, sorry. And then, much like with the hair, um, first, I'm ignoring some of the finer strands and I'm focusing on the form of the fur. I'll use medium sea gray to form my next highlight. And as I work up, you can see that I'm starting to pick out the individual strands. You really want to make sure with hair and fur like this, not to get lost in the weeds. It's important to define the form and the volume of the shape before going for details. And then my final highlight on the fur will be with pale gray. I'm focusing this on the top part of the collar, the inside where it meets the face, and then on the hands, on the top part as it wraps around to the underside. To paint the non-metal metal buckles, I'm going to start with a base coat of ash gray. I'm going to make sure that I get an edge highlight over the entire uh, box, leaving a bit of the black base coat showing through. My next highlight will be with graphite, and it's pretty straightforward. I'm just continuing to highlight the top part of the buckle with some edge highlights on the back for reflections. My next highlight is medium sea gray, and as I work my way up from this point, you can see that I'm showing less and less. From medium sea gray into pale sand, we're starting to get into our bright highlights. So I'm focusing more on the specular highlights on the front, um, less on the edging in the back. And then I'll finish off with some greenish white, bright specular edge highlighting on the top with a bright dot on the bottom corner. And then finally, I'm going to nuance the entire piece with a shade of Juchi Violet. I'm using the airbrush for this. You can do this by hand. I'm focusing this mainly on the boots, the pants, and the jacket, as well as the skin and the hair. I want to be really careful not to overspray too much onto the fur of the jacket or on the white of the shirt. And then finally, we'll finish off with some weathering powders. I believe this is a 50-50 mix of a burnt umber as well as a burnt red. Something to match the existing collection for my client. I'm focusing this color on the rubble where it meets the wood bark and then a little bit on the boots as well. When you're doing weathering powders like this, it's best to apply a little bit at a time. It's much easier to apply more powders than it is to try and take off powders once you've applied it. So less is more, um, build your colors up and just do it slowly in incremental values. Once I'm happy with the effect and the amount of weathering powders, I'll go back in with some mineral spirits I have in a spritzer bottle and I'll saturate the base. This will help to fix the powders to the base, secure it, and then I can go back in with my final layer of black paint to trim the base. And then I'll finish off the model with a coat of matte varnish. This is a gaming piece, so I want to make sure that it's suitably protected for handling. And that wraps up this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed.
If you did, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more awesome weekly content. If you missed it, you can check out my last week's video, which covers how to paint Logan and his motorcycle from the same Rivals kit. I'll also have links to my other social media platforms in the video description below. And as always, until next time, happy hobbying.